The following commercial rafting incident occurred in May 1987 on the Lehigh River in Northeast Pennsylvania. Mr. Protesky blew out his knee in a water fight with other guests. The primary focus of this video is on conducting the activity. Should water battles between passengers be treated any differently than any other activity? The video provides you with five questions to ask yourself. They will help you make any activity safer. Some of the names have been changed. The whitewater trip occurred on the eight mile section of the Lehigh River from Whitehaven to Rockport. There are also trips on the 16 mile lower section from Rockport to just upstream of Jim Thorpe. It was a typical whitewater release on the Lehigh River in the range of 750 cubic feet per second. The river is generally rated as a class two plus on the scale of river difficulty. The following pictures were taken by the author on a private trip to document the rapids. The put-in is the old railroad right away in Whitehaven. Today, the put-in has been significantly upgraded and the abandoned right away has been converted into a popular rails to trail. Looking downstream, the I-80 bridges are visible. Sitting in an eddy on the river right side of the river, the active railroad bridge and the I-80 bridges are visible in the background. A little over one mile downstream from the put-in is the Tannery Bridge. Moving downriver is Triple Drop on river left of Maple Island. Further down the channel is a ledge with a nearly river-wide hydraulic. Around the bend, some flat water, past the bridge piers, and toward the entrance of Z Rapids. The incident occurred between Z Rapids and Lunch Rock. Lunch Rock can be seen on river left in the background. This section is not a pool of water, but a series of riffles with some rocks that can easily catch a raft. Note this point later in the deposition of the trip leader. The incident. The plaintiff's expert gives a good summation of the incident, and it is included here. He notes that Mr. Procheski was in a four-person raft, which is typically used on the Lehigh. He notes that everyone was participating in what he called a splashing activity. It was supervised and encouraged by the guides. The splashing activity is an activity, and like any other activity, the issue is how it is conducted. They had five gallon buckets. Originally, they were needed to bail the non self bailing rafts. Since they were using the newer self bailing rafts, there was no need for the buckets other than to use them in water fights. This point is later confirmed by the trip leader. Mr. Proteski stood up in the raft to throw the water in his bucket, slipped, and blew out his knee. In his attempt to justify negligence, the expert makes the case that neoprene booties were deficient because they didn't have holes in them to let out the water. His claim was this caused Mr. Procheski to slip and injure his knee. The expert notes other potential breaches of duty, such as no first aid was rendered, and Mr. Procheski was left on the side of the river to be rescued later. The trip leader indicated that first aid was rendered by the guides. Regardless, these issues are not directly addressed in this video. The five questions. I reviewed several books on recreation programming and found that they are more complex than needed to be. I reduced the programming process to five questions you need to consider. One, how does this activity contribute to the overall experience? Two, what resources do you need to do the activity? Three, what are the rules for conducting the activity? Four, what is the role of the leader? Five, how do you do the activity safely? Your response to these questions help you to engineer safe and enjoyable experiences that contribute to the overall experience. If there is a question, either modify the activity to conform or eliminate it. Let's examine the five questions more in depth. The overall experience. 
How does the activity contribute to the overall experience? You are a recreational engineer designing an experience for your participants. Think of everything you do as a string of activities strung together to create this experience. It is more than your goals and objectives. Engineering a wilderness experience, a team building experience, or simply a fun outing using the whitewater trip as a background are all different experiences. Water fights may be inappropriate for a wilderness experience, but okay for a fun outing. Question. What is the overall experience you are creating? Do water fights relate to the overall experience you are engineering? Examine the other activities you are doing in terms of the overall experience. Resources. What resources do you need to do your activity? For a water fight, you need something to fight with. The trip leader confirms that splashing others with paddles is dangerous. People can easily be injured. He notes that not using paddles is an industry standard, but it is not written down anywhere. Buckets were supplied on the trip. The trip leader notes that their purpose was for splashing. A bucket holds five gallons of water. A gallon of water weighs roughly eight pounds, and a bucket of water weighs a maximum of 40 pounds. Throwing 40 pounds of water is impractical. Most people will scoop up one or two gallons at most. This is eight to 16 pounds. Standing on an unstable and flexible raft floor, it is easy to lose one's footing and fall over while throwing a bucket of water. On the trip, five-gallon buckets were provided for water fights. A good alternative to the five-gallon bucket is to cut the bottom off a gallon jug. Partially filled, the water weighs a manageable three or four pounds at most. Or Water guns similar to the super soaker can be provided. Question. What are suitable tools to be used in water fights? Are there any other resources you need to conduct the activity? Rules. What are the rules for conducting the activity? Informal play, playing a game, or for that matter, any activity involves playing by the rules. Consider some of the following rules for a water fight. Splashing can occur on designated flat water stretches. Remain in your boat. Absolutely no splashing with paddles. You can hurt someone. Avoid standing in the raft. Feel free to use the one gallon jugs or super soakers provided. Question. What rules would you recommend for the splashing activity? Are they consistent with the common practices of your industry? Explain how you would present the rules in your talk up to create a positive experience. Role of the leader. What is the role of the leader? First, the role of the guide in a splashing activity is to enforce the rules. Second, this activity requires supervision of the group. The guide needs to be in the area to systematically supervise the group and to take specific action to keep the activity within the appropriate boundaries. Question. You have an overly aggressive guest who is consistently violating your rules. How would you handle the situation? Safety. How do you do the activity safely? Actually, if you adhere to the first four questions, you will most likely have a safer activity. In addition, accidents are the result of an unwanted energy transfer from a source to you, your participants, or another target. Identify potential sources of unwanted energy flows and place administrative and physical barriers to reduce the unwanted energy flow from reaching the target. Proper resources, rules, and the leader supervision are all barriers that reduce the likelihood of an unwanted energy transfer. Question. Apply the five questions to the splash activity on the Lehigh River. Does the activity contribute to the overall experience? Were using buckets appropriate? Were the rules appropriate 
and was there adequate supervision? Was the activity conducted safely? By asking five key programming questions, the five question activity model assists you in conducting an activity to make it safer and more enjoyable. Mr. Percheski may have had a weak knee predisposed to injury. Perhaps it was only a matter of when it would occur. Regardless, could they have conducted the activity differently to make it better? Perhaps. With the five question activity model, you are a recreational engineer creating a safer and more enjoyable activity that contributes to the overall experience.